Like I mentioned in the previous video, nicks in the edge of your clay necklace or small pits or hairline cracks in the surface can be a little bit of a pain. Now, sometimes this can be down to the condition of the clay that you've started working with. But sometimes it can be just a fluke. Sometimes you roll your piece of clay out, you make your necklace, you bake it in the oven, and when it's completely dry, you flip it over and you find a small imperfection. Now you can't fix the fingerprint area full stop. So if you've got a big crack or a huge nick in the fingerprint itself, you might decide at that point that you want to just start over. But small imperfections in other parts of the necklace aren't the end of the world. It's perfectly possible to fix all of these small imperfections using something called silver clay paste. Now, you can buy silver clay paste ready-made, or you can make your own using your very own silver clay sandings or filings that we collected earlier on our Teflon sheet when we sanded back the rough edges of our necklace. All you have to do is tip the filings from your Teflon sheet into a small glass jar or some kind of sealed pot with a lid. I'm using this small kilner jar, which is actually designed for spices, but it's the perfect size and it's actually perfect for this because it has a really, really tight, airtight seal. Other jars which could be used are those miniature jam jars that you sometimes find in gift sets or in tea rooms. Or if you really, really want to, you can buy paste pots from jewellery suppliers. These are small lidded pots with sponges inside, which you need to keep damp. You pop your silver clay into the pot underneath, place the plastic top in position there, damp your sponges not, so they're not soaking wet, and pop them in the top and seal the pot up. You just have to be mindful that you need to return to the pot every now and then to re-damp the sponges because they will dry out. You can even buy ready-made paste, but whatever you do, it's still important to try and catch all of this silver clay dust because it is just so very useful. So I'm going to tip it into the paste pot there and making sure that I get every single last little bit. I'm going to get the end of a fine tip paintbrush and I'm going to scrape all of that silver clay dust straight into the paint pot, making sure I collect absolutely all of it. Now, taking a teaspoon and a few drips of water, I'm going to pop a few drips of water into the jar. Only needs to be a very tiny bit. And I'm going to mix the end with the end of the spoon or the end of the paintbrush. Continue to mix until you have a, a paste. Think very fine polyfiller, um, single cream, or maybe a thin buttercream frosting, the kind of you would make small shaped swirls on the top of cupcakes with. You will often have to leave this mixture for a little while so that the clay dust can rehydrate. Then, make sure I've got everything off the end. Take your tiny paintbrush and very carefully pick up your necklace. Now I'm going to imagine I have a small pit on the underside of this necklace. I'm going to very carefully and precisely paint the tiniest amount of water over the pit or the hairline crack in the necklace. Next, I'm going to paint on the tiniest, tiniest amount of silver clay paste over the hairline crack or the pit until it completely disappears. Be careful not to be wasteful, not only because you don't want to waste your paste, but also because you're going to have to sand this back afterwards. And if you put a load of silver clay paste on the back, it's a lot more clean up later. Now, the water that you added first is very important because it will help the new clay paste to stick to the necklace, which is made of perfectly dry clay that's been baked in the oven. You now have to, have to paste your necklace over to one side and let it completely dry before you can sand back the newly repaired section again. 
but this should now have completely filled any defect, making it completely disappear. If at all possible, you really, really want to avoid having to repair anything and having to do all of this. It's kind of a last resort rather than having to discard a necklace or put it into your waste pot. It's extra work, but it, and it can, if the crack is deep, it can mean your piece is inherently flawed and weaker in the area of the defect. Once you've completely sanded this back with your very finest pad or sandpaper, carefully dust off the surface of the fingerprint necklace to make sure that no clay dust remains.